Understand this. Understand this. Understand this. Understand this. Ladies and gentlemen, put your damn hands together. Get ready to have your earlobes massaged by the one and only Finesse Mitchell. Do you want more? Do you want more? It's your boy by on the door. We coming oh. twice. Oh. Three times. Three times. Four times. Oh. About to blow your mind. This is podcast number four. Number four. Damn, son. What's up, Jeannie? What's up, brother? Shout out to my brother over there behind the uh, turntables slash mixing board slash computer slash anything that has a cord that can be plugged in. Right. (laughs) You know, (laughs) boy, if you spill a glass of water over there, your ass is electrocuted. (laughs) Electra F and cute it. Do you hear me? Damn, son. Okay, y'all. Yeah, that's true. Oh my goodness. Uh, episode four. Listen, I've done some traveling. I've you've been. been to, I've been to Saudi Arabia. You literally. I was gonna say you've been around the world in and less than sixty days. Yeah. Saudi Arabia to Cabo. This is this is <laughs> this is me not like doing some bougie shit right now. I'm just right. saying where I've been. <laughs> All right, Saudi Arabia, go figure. I was so let me tell you how you know you got a black customer service person on oh, the phone. Oh no. Let me tell you, you know, and, and, and everybody gonna get this now. Um basically, you gotta let your credit card companies know you're going oh, right. overseas. Right. And I forgot to do that, apparently. So when I tried to use the American Express in Saudi Arabia, oh, uh, I was no. declined a couple of times. Um and uh, and no, I was not embarrassed because one, uh, they were Arabic. They didn't understand the way I was cursing. You know what I mean? They didn't get it. <laughs> they curse funny over there. You mother bitch. And, you know, like mother bitch. What's a mother bitch? <laughs> but um, but and number two, bro, uh, it was my fault. It was my bad. Uh, I called, and when I called, this is how you know you got black customer service lady. Uh, I said, hey, uh, you know. Uh, she said her name was Connie. I said, hey, Connie, listen, I'm in Saudi Arabia right now, and I can't use my car. She said, Saudi Arabia? Look at you. I said. What? <laughs> when? I said. When? Uh, yeah. She was like, uh, you know, looking at all your basic charges, they really like, you know, stateside. Well, look at you in Saudi Arabia. What? I was like, um, yeah, can you turn my card on, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody who would just be like, "Look at you!" Right? As in, like, I didn't know how to. I didn't really even know how to take that. As in, like, I can't travel. You know what I mean? Or as in, like, I'm, look at you, boy. I can see if it was like your mom or your auntie. Yeah, if it, it, it sounded like family, maybe I'm taking it the wrong way. Maybe I'm taking it the wrong way. I apologize, Connie. You was you was you was impressed hmm. that Finesse Mitchell, who usually only goes to South Florida. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in Saudi Arabia? It was dope. Uh, they do. They don't want you to touch the women, at all. You know, just if you don't know them, or if you, you know what I mean, like just, a handshake you, or a yeah, hug, or yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, just don't touch them. You know, Damn. just lean in. Now they'll hug when it's appropriate. I did the show after the show. They loved the show. We were, you know, basically not hugging, but putting right. our arms around each other and right. taking pictures. But um, in my first show. I found out the hard way. I got into the crowd. I um, I started doing crowd work. I came off the stage. I went into the crowd. Spotlight was for, on me. Yeah, you I'm just literally going to do crowd work. Bro, I literally did the Oprah. I literally went into the crowd, <laughs> put the microphone up to people's mouths, asking what? them questions. Just, And they're dying. They're, they're having yeah, a great time. Because I said, you know, you know, with the the girls, they wear the, uh, do you know what it's called? The full. Oh, um, it's uh the thobe, the thobe is what the guy wears, and that's the white long shirt um, that goes from head to toe. Um, I know. Uh, once and, I and, got and, a kurta gift one time. That's not the whole thing, though. But here, let me. I almost bought one. I almost bought the head dress with the, you know, with the rings that holds it in place. I was, I was almost there, brother. I just the hijab. Remember, the hijab. Yes. Yeah. And so, um, basically. Uh, you can only see their eyebrows really <laughs> down to like the top of their nose. So, bro, I just kept killing them because I kept saying, y'all, the, man, when I say y'all are the prettiest women in the world, I have never seen women so beautiful. And they start clapping. And I'd be like, yes, from here to here, you are the prettiest woman in the world. <laughs> no, no one has better. Air la- eyelash follicles. You know, right. No one has <laughs> better eyelash follicles. 
follicles, bro. That everything was in line with these women's eyebrows and everything. Because that's the only thing they can really show off, show off. Dude, I produced this short documentary uh, called Peace Dawn Partitioners about the partition of India in 1947. But we went to a Sikh temple to shoot some of these scenes. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, they invite you down to dinner. And it's all these women in their hijab. And that's all you can see. Right. The beautiful eyes. I said, ooh, girl, you're killing it from here to here. <laughs> and they, would, they, would just, they would just bust out laughing because, you know, they got it. They was a sense of humor. Yeah, ha-ha. Yeah. They got it. But I was just killing them with that. Uh, you're I'm, good at that. How do you do that? Kind of fit into the, like a culture you know what? I always try to give off just the most, um, just the most Will Smith is Smith is. is <laughs> does that make sense? I try to do my biggest Will Smith is right. energy ever when I just Damn, walk into son. a crowd, man. I, when I walk into a crowd, I'm like, we're about to have a good time. I do right. not care right. if I talk about, you know, your your your. I I see the the curl and iron burn from the stage. On your forehead. I'm coming down here <laughs> to let everybody see this curl nine burn on your forehead. That Vaseline and the little mascara is coming through. It's coming through. I see it. You know, so when I just Dang, make fun like of a vulture up there, you know what? But it's in a nice way. It's like, oh my God, no, he didn't. Girl, this right. is crazy. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's just not in a mean spirit of way. I, p- I touched this girl in Saudi by the hand and, you know, her arm helped her up out of her chair and walked her to the other side of the, uh, the audience where there was an empty seat uh, with a boy. Can't do that. Uh, <laughs> can't do that. They were like, Dang. they were like, uh, where is this going? You know what I mean? And so uh, all, that, wow. all that matchmaking, all that, uh, it, it was, but it was fun. It was, it wasn't, he right. had said something that made me say, oh, this will be perfect. And then, and in my head it was, it just, it, it just didn't, you know, so, so yeah, they, so they just gave me a warning after that. Not like, even a warning. That's harsh. I was gonna say, what was it? A, a gunshot? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. You know what? You actually heard Tehran, uh, Tehran, one of my uh, good friends, comedians here in L.A., who's uh, half black, half Persian. He was there. He was hosting, and he knows all of the the do's and don'ts. He's there hosting <laughs> everybody that comes through. He's there. Right. He knows all the do's and don'ts. And you heard him from the side of the stage go, "No." <laughs> Yeah. And I was just like, ah, and, and it was at that moment. Right, that right, right. <laughs> just like, when keeping it real. Wait, hold on, do it, hold on, wait, I'm good, trade back and forth, you ready? And it was at that moment <laughs> when I knew I just fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was like, uh, somebody called the embassy. Because I'm about to uh, get snatched up out of here, man. I need I need the USA to know. I'm Hashtag get finesse home. <laughs> get get Bring me finesse home. home. <laughs> so yeah, man, it was fun. Um, one of the funny things uh, uh, with that a Nike ad, a Nike ad. Go to my Instagram. I'm gonna post it on my Instagram at finesse Mitchell. A Nike ad. Uh, all the shoulders of the girls were pixelated. What? Pixelated the shoulder, just the shoulder. If I bro. Google Nike ad, if you what do I type in? I don't, I don't know, but the, the the shoulders are pixelated. Yeah, I want you to go to my Instagram oh, at on finesse. Your Instagram. Yeah, I want you to go to my Instagram at finesse much. You'll find that picture where the girl's shoulders are pixelated. It's really, really crazy. That's such a different culture, man. Anyway, brother, I'm back. Welcome back. Look at you. Look at you. I had to uh, had to clean up a little bit. Uh-huh. I was tired of the stairs. What? <laughs> Gen- had to get my hair braided. Lady Jeannie got his hair tied down. Like he got it braided on South Central somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Well, they be lifting weights in the front yard. Oh, no. And, and I'm doing gonna, double no, dutch no, on the wait. sidewalk. No, no God. <laughs> I'm not going to let you that, do it to They me. got that car sitting out there in the front yard, but it's, you know, you can't see the bottom of the tire because it's been there so long. It's it's soaked in dirt. You know what I mean? It's covered oh, no. in dirt. <laughs> but yeah, man. All right. Coming up in here looking sharp. Shout out to Sid the Kid. What's up, brother? Uh, your twin brother. Jenny has a twin brother, Sid the Kid. And twin what up? brother, Wonder Twins. Yeah, man. Uh, y'all are like com- y'all are complete opposites, bro. You can't hide it from me too for too long, Jeannie. Y'all are complete opposites. Yeah, I think it's eventually people figure it out. Yeah, I figured it out. Y'all are opposite. He's a thug. But the, he, he got he got. <laughs> but all, he's yeah. so smart though. He's right. Amazing. He's brilliant. Right. But he just wants to walk that bad line. It seems like he likes dabbling over there. I, his uh, everybody got different. Uh, like not like role models, people who. Mm-hmm. And he hung out with the older cousins, and right. I don't know who I was with. I guess right. I don't know. And 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 your your role model was probably uh, 
somebody don't you don't do it don't you what? don't don't what? do it <laughs> <laughs> all right man i ain't gonna tell the people who your role model was but he's somebody ivy league somebody i, you know what I'm I thought somebody. you were gonna say like brian no. gumble no or I, something, no which Br- is- you know brian gumble or <laughs> ivy league bro <laughs> no man you you got way more swag than freaking brian gumble are you kidding me Take it. Listen, people, uh, we got some dope segments coming up. Uh, Finesse Your Mess is debuting today on Understand This. Hey. Definitely don't want to go anywhere. Stick around for Finesse Your Mess. That's when I'm taking questions straight off of the, where did we get them? The people just hit me up, right? Yep. We told them where to go. Yep. They hit me up, and now we they got real relationship issues. We're going to see what we can do with that when we come back. Understand this. Understand this. Understand this. People, it's that time. Jeannie, we are debuting. Mm. We are debuting. Finesse your mess. Okay, so everybody, everybody has a relationship hiccup. Somewhere along the way, people, nobody gets this game right. Mm. Nobody's an expert. It does not matter if you're a young, old, fat, skinny, black, white, whatever. I'm here for you people. All right. Uh, I, re- I looked into the inbox, the fam bam inbox. You know what I'm saying? And I pulled out some people who really said finesse. Please, I'm at my wit's end. Finesse my mess. It's time to finesse your mess. If you're always stressed, then you need to finesse your mess. Mm, love those girls. We got to give them a name. <laughs> please, people, when you hear my finesse your mess girls, please just, you know, go send me a message and just send me a name. Say finesse your mess girls and then what the name should be. Right. I'm taking the best name. All right. Um, Jeannie, my mind is in a good headspace, sir. What do we got? Okay, we've got girlfriend threatens to open relationship. Oh, she threatens open relationship due to lack of sex. This is a guy writing this. He's 25 and his girlfriend's 25. They're both 25. Mm -hmm. He says, so me and my girlfriend have been dating for a little over a year. When we first started dating, it started off as a very physical relationship like four times a day. Over the span of a year, we do it two to three times per week now. She always asks me why I don't have sex as often as we used to, and I just say that my sex drive hasn't been the same. I've landed a good paying job, still go to school, plus the other stresses of day to day. I don't show her any less love than I used to, but I just don't, I don't feel like having sex all the time. Stop. Stop. (laughs) I'm kind of pissed that this is the inaugural debut number one question. (laughs) It's an easy one. Is it? Is it? (laughs) It's not even, it's not even a problem. It's too easy. (laughs) That's not a problem. That's not a real problem. There are people out here with real problems. And this man is complaining. She's complaining. And now he's writing in because she's complaining that two to three times a week is not enough. That's his people. that's his that's his reality. People. People. Let me tell you something. Whatever you think you are going through, there is somebody out there who is living a far better life than you and they don't even appreciate it. Mm. So you might as well just always stay in your lane. And enjoy what you get. Some people are spoiled with riches. Jeannie, some people are spoiled with riches and they don't even know it. Say that, huh? Now, I think now I think there's a certain age when everybody, you know, says, hey, sex, let's slow down. So, but you're 25. You were doing it four times a day. Right. Who does that? Both of them were unemployed. <laughs> Both of them had no job. Right, right. So two unemployed people having sex four times a day. In between, you know, daytime, afternoon, <laughs> prime time, and then late evening. Right. They're 24. They're out of college. They're out they, of college. They've been together for a year and they're 25 They don't now, so they have real jobs. Yeah. There's no way. <sighs> anyway, so you, you looking, you listening to each other, you're looking at each other, and, you, and then all of a sudden you think, you, Jeannie, what is the next one? I don't, my problem is, my problem with this is that there are people who would love to have sex two or three times a week. Right. And they complain, and he complain. Yeah, he's complaining that she's complaining. They better stay together. All right, I got another warm up one for you. It's another warm up. Okay. Okay. This is called girlfriend 
spoiled the film for me and, and got childish. Girlfriend spoiled the film for me and got childish. This is what the guy writes in. Due to my hobby and other reasons, I had not been able to watch a film that was released earlier this year. I was very much looking forward to this film as the main character shares the same hobby as me and was finally able to watch it this past weekend with my girlfriend. About 30 minutes into the film, my girlfriend starts talking about developments in the plot that have not yet occurred whilst I was watching. When I asked her to stop, she snapped and spoiled the ending. I told her that was childish and that it upset me since because I was looking forward to a look at this film as the main character and I are enthused by the same hobby. This set her off even more. She started insulting my hobby, my taste in film, and even the size of my penis. I was so taken aback that I dumped her on the spot. She immediately began to apologize, saying she was joking. The next day, she texted asking to talk, and I told her I needed time, but I'm not sure I want to talk at all. So I asked this. Do I owe her the opportunity to explain herself, or is it okay for me to leave things as they are? <sighs> By the way, that reminds me of something you said in episode one. I hope I say the same thing. Well, you said out of nowhere, and you drive trucks. <laughs> you right. That? Yes, I so do remember that. So that was built up. That was built up, brother. Absolutely. I was just thinking she's been trying to, like, getting out for a very long time in this relationship she's frustrated but with the, she's maybe she maybe she's not in love maybe she's you know she's not into him like she used to be right. she's frustrated and so he actually was a man about it took it on the chin he didn't even like what the, you know what i'm right, saying right, right. so he's white this is white <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying so i respect how he handled it but, sir, I will respect you even more if you stand your ground. Do not let this woman back into your life so easily, sir. Please, this woman has reached a point with you where she doesn't even respect your entertainment value free time Watch or out. your hobby, what you love doing. So even when I love doing what I love to do, I know you think of it as shit. Like, I know you think it ain't, you know. Right. You, you just shit it on supports it. you, yeah. Yes. And so then when I have my free time, you want to be so selfish. Like, why? You want to be so selfish. What was in the moment where she felt like she had to, like, basically start talking through the movie? The dude had obviously told her how he was so right. looking forward to it. Right. To the point where you're going to ruin the ending? You was looking for a fight. Ooh. Were you, were, was it the, see, now, I don't know. I'm going to just say it. I'm going to say it. Was it the har hormonal week? <laughs> were you not in your right mind? time to get serious you know i'm not saying that to you know right you know but let's keep it real but consider that Cons you have to in a relationship we up on each other all the time if people if, if, if women aren't going through pain during that week physical pain they definitely a little crankier so why just go off all of that in one damn right like she read them right you know what i mean so i commend him for saying wow so not only are you going to disrespect me, this movie, and tell me everything I like to do is like bullshit, but now you're like, oh, let me come back. I'm just kidding. Your right. dick isn't little. <laughs> I ain't going to never live that down. I got to find a new girl who think my dick is big. I'm going to never get naked with you. Right. You'll never forget and that. I'll never forget that. Ladies, that is, the one of, that is probably top three, you could say. That's the end. That's finish him. Finish that, him. That is, this, that is, I'm all, that is, I'm already packed. Bro, my oh. shit is safely in the car. Damn, son. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got the windows halfway down because I'm driving off, as I say, and you got a little dick. Because that's what you say when, you, when you're driving off. Wow. There have been a few women that have said that face to face, and it didn't go well. We've seen, we've seen forensic files. We've seen <laughs> we saw. first 48. Yeah. You know, you, you know, we've seen the confrontation, and it doesn't end well. So... I always say, if you're going to say what you're going to really say, that's really on your mind, yeah, say that on the phone or say that as the car is pulling off, you know. Anyway, well, I hope that helped that young man because the advice, official finesse my mess advice is, uh, if you do take her back, make her work for it. But brother, you are fooling yourself because you will never forget that she said you had a little dick. You can get a new hobby. Can't get a new dick. Next. Oh! <laughs> These next two are kind of, I'm going to read the title. You tell me which one you want. Because they're not necessarily a relationship, but they are interesting. One is called My Brother the Polygamist. Mm -hmm. Or do you want ex-wife letting my boyfriend stay overnight? I'm sorry, ex-wife letting her boyfriend stay overnight to watch my daughter. Which one of those two are you feeling? I like the ex-wife. Okay. Letting her. The ex-wife has a new boyfriend. Mm-hmm. 
and I guess they split custody, and uh, she lets the new boyfriend, well, I'll read it. So I, this is a man, he's 31 years old. I've been separated from my wife for nine months, and she started seriously dating someone, 25, younger than him, a few months ago. My ex-wife and I have a 13-year-old daughter, we have 50-50 custody, and we had both agreed to have a conversation with each other and our daughter before introducing any new partner to her. Unbeknownst to me, my ex-wife went ahead and introduced a new guy to our daughter a couple months ago, has already been letting him stay overnight frequently at her apartment when my daughter is there, and yesterday she left my daughter at her apartment all day with a new boyfriend by themselves while she was at work. The ex-wife assures me he's a trustworthy and nice guy, but I was furious upon hearing this and I'm incredibly concerned with the thought of him being at the apartment by himself with my daughter. Honestly, I don't even like the idea of him staying overnight while she is there. I voice my concerns to my ex-wife. However, she, she construes everything I say as an attempt to control her life. I would like to know your recommendations on how I should approach this issue and if I'm justified in not wanting a man from my ex-wife whom my ex-wife has only known for a few months staying overnight and during the day when the daughter's at the house this just seems highly inappropriate to me Ugh. that sounds messy oh that sounds extremely messy bro i mean you went from like layup to to like <laughs> 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 want me to make a goddamn half court shot with a blindfold <laughs> facing the other direction damn genie finesse shut up roberta jesus <laughs> Finesse. No, I already knew what you was gonna say. Shut up, Roberta. I, I, but you know, I'm gonna tackle this one. Uh, I, it's so it's so many parts, and this this has so many moving parts. Um, first and foremost, let's let's keep it 100. You can't do really anything but worry about somebody's other 50 percent. Right. That 50 50 custody is real. Right. That means that when that child is in my care and you're not there. I have to, as an adult, and you have to think I do love my child. I kind of know what the situation is, so right. you got to you got to let me you got to let me live. I'm now. Do women like it when new women come over and start, you know, dating a dude and the the new the boys, the little boys and little girls are now hanging around a new mama potentially, or just a new woman, a new Oops. chick? No. So it it when I say it, this cuts both ways so sharply. That I would always say, hey, first you got to give the benefit of the doubt to the parent unless the parent has been proven hmm. to be recklessly irresponsible where hmm. somebody else had to get involved. The track record has to have already been there. Hmm. So since we're saying that maybe, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it really real, we're, we're assuming he didn't marry a promiscuous hoe. Right. We're assuming that she's a legit, straight up. That's where I'm coming from. Right. He I say that married. to I say that to say I'm I'm questioning his character now instead of hers. Did right. you decide right? Because you were the one in love with her, right? You were the one who had a child with her. Did you decide right? And if she's that woman that you married, then you keep asking yourself: Am I saying this out of spite because she's with somebody new now, or am right. I really saying she's unfit all of a sudden? Right. Okay. I know I took a long time to get there, but that train pulled in, brother. That point was made. I move on to the next moving point to say this. Um, okay, miss, you don't get let off the hook that easy. That's pretty quick to have a boyfriend spending the night, spending the night. Now, she said three to four. I, I heard three to four months. You know, I heard three to four. If you're seeing well, each other. Well, they've only been split up nine months. So. They've only been split up nine months. And then he said, after the nine months, he's, you know, oh, no. If they've only been split up nine months, the, her two to three months of seeing this dude. Right, what right. We, what we at? We like directly five months, six months after? And the dude is already spending the night? Right. Yikes. Yikes. That kind of sound like she knew this dude. Ooh. She knew this dude way before he thinks she knew this then dude. Then that's a hell no, my daughter. You can't be over there with my daughter. See, that's another moving point. Because I think he left that part out. Oh, hell. See, even Otis said, hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> I hear you, Curtis. Everybody is saying, hell no. Everybody who was in the movie Gone with the Wind <laughs> in the slave quarters is coming up to say, hell no. Your ancestors warning the you. Ancestors are warning you, sir. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty quick, which means I'm just going to assume she knew the dude. Right. 
you're not going to meet somebody within three months or four months and have them come and spend the night and you're, you and you have the, your daughter that week that weekend that's why would you do that right why would yeah. you do that do you, are you so are you really pissed that y'all didn't work out and you moved on so quickly and you already like sleeping with some dude to get back at him because common sense says yo he said and i agreed to according to him let's have a conversation first right so why would i not have the conversation why would i just do this right so that means you know either there's spite there or unfortunately she could be a hoe or right and i'll go with this one the third option which probably should have been the first option i'm sorry <laughs> ladies that she already had a relationship with the guy for a little while she felt very comfortable around him yeah need to ask that kid be honest with daddy have you ever seen this dude before like have you ever seen this have you seen this dude when you was 12 years old 11 years old 10 years old have you seen this dude before? Was she calling him Uncle Randy? Finesse. Was she calling Roberta? Stop. Oh, was she calling no. him cousins? Finesse. Like, have you seen this? It, was he a coach? And you don't take oh. and you don't play no sports? Like, what? How did she introduce you to this dude? No, have you seen this dude God. before? Be honest with Daddy. Daddy got to know. I love oh. you so much. Daddy got to know. And that's unfortunate because then you got to pull the kid into the whole mess. That's what I was gonna say. This is terrible for the kid. We said it was messy when we started. Yeah. So, there's so, so many moving parts, Jenny. Now I'm moving on to the next part. You ready? Um, it got a couple more parts. Um, Ma'am, uh, once again, this is on you. Um, it takes nothing. It takes nothing but to let somebody know who you were married to and have a kid with. Yo, I'm I'm starting to see somebody. Yep. It takes nothing. If you guys are friends and you guys are co-parenting, let him put his big boy Easy. pants on. Let him put them on. Make a man up and just say, hey, don't give him a reason to say you did it wrong. Don't give him a reason to say you foul. You got every right to move on. But all he asks, because there's a child involved, let him, let him know. Let him know. You know, that's just cool. And I'll let you know. You let me know. But man, when it's always like, and I'm, you know what? I'm gonna pull this train in, in, into the into the station. It's never easy when the other person moves on first. Damn, son. Next. All right, this one's called pregnancy trick. Mm -hmm. Okay, this this is a 24 year old male writing this. Okay. He says, okay, first thing I should state is that I I, I really care for this girl. She's 23, and I can imagine myself having a future with her. I should also note that up until recently, we never re really had any major issues, fights in our relationship or anything. For these reasons, we've been talking a lot about the future, marriage and all that, where we see ourselves in the next few years. However, while she feels we're ready to settle down, I want to wait a little longer so that we can enjoy our youth for a few more years. This has caused some disagreement between us and did cause her to express concern over having to wait too long. But I thought this was nothing major and told her to just wait a few more years, like two, three more years. Okay. So is that it? There, 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 apparently there's more as for why I think she's maybe trying to get pregnant. All I can say is that her behavior has been strange over the last two months. How so? First, I should note that over the course of our relationship, we both agreed that I would either use a condom or pull out since uh, she sometimes fails to remember to take her birth control. I love but, the pull out. But, but I am the king pull out. <laughs> I am broke. When I tell you I ain't never had a baby, I ain't never had a baby. All right, that was that one time. Other than that, I ain't never had a baby, and I'm king pull out. <laughs> you <a fool. laughs> All right, uh, so I that I know about. <laughs> but she recently told me that I could start finishing inside her because she was, <laughs> she was, she was going to do it better. She was going to do better about remembering to take her pills. So she said, "You could start finishing inside because I'll do better at taking my pills." Okay. This caught me by surprise, and I told her that I was okay with continuing on the way things were, which seemed to upset her. Mm. She was, didn't really get mad, but she seemed really insistent on me finishing inside her, and it promised me that it would feel a lot better. Bruh, I'm going to tell you something. I'm king pull out. Even if you say, <laughs> okay, you can do it inside of me. My whole body won't even let me. I'm so routine when it's coming up. My hips don't thrust in. They, they what? pop out. They Bro, what are you automatically about, pop man? out. <laughs> <laughs> automatically pop out. My wife had to you literally got... lock her legs around me. <laughs> 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 because I had, because just, I mean, 40 years of damn near, well, not 40, but 30 years of like one motion to pull out, my my body would not stay in. So, okay, anyway. That's funny. 
All right. Okay. So she's trying to trap him. That's how he feel. Yeah. At this point, I had no reason to not believe her. So I did it a few times. She ain't poking holes in the condom issue. So, all right. So later on, she says, he says, so she starts making comments like, you'd make a great dad. It'd be so fun to have kids. Um, And then she starts, and she said, oh, check this out. All right. I tried to press. This was very unusual as I've always bought them. She said, can I start buying the condoms? He said, this is unusual because I've always <laughs> bought them. When I asked her why the sudden urge to do this, she said it was because it was convenient and something that all girlfriends do. I tried to press the issue further, but she ended the conversation by saying that she just wanted to take care of me. As of now, she hasn't brought up, she hasn't bought any for me, and I have no proof that she could be poking holes in the condoms, but I feel really uneasy. Lies, okay. I don't want her, I don't want to hurt her yeah. by refusing to have sex with her, yeah. but I also don't want to have a baby now. This isn't helping by the fact that she still wants me to finish in her when we have sex. In fact, it has gotten to the point where I feel <laughs> bad if I don't comply, even though I feel I shouldn't give in to her because I want so badly to trust her. I think I really would be devastated if I found out that she's been trying to trick me into getting oh. pregnant. It, Jamie, anyway, I found out I'm not good at waiting. Waiting for finesse your mess <laughs> questions. Here's the finish. question. Here's the question. Mm-hmm. Anyway, am I being paranoid about my girlfriend trying to get pregnant, or do I have cause to be concerned? Also, how should I proceed and confront her about my concerns? Damn it. He, this relationship is over. I hate to say it. This relationship is over. Oh no. There's a there, there's a chance. It has a chance, but this is why I like giving relationship advice. I don't come at it from the normal angle of where people think, oh. Relationship advice is easy. Anybody can do that. No, right. I see a different color. Right. You know what I mean? I think some people are g- g- good at it because there's some people just, are, whatever their thing is. I, so here we go. It's all about trust, which, of course, sounds simple, but eventually he's going to have to look at her and say, I don't trust you to get the condoms. Wow. And once he say that, she gets, he's he's locked in, bro, because she gets to say, Excuse me? Right. So you think I'm trying to trap you? And he should he should respond if he already got his bags packed. <laughs> but if not, and she got access to bleach, <laughs> he should tread lightly. <laughs> but he should say <laughs> he should say, uh, absolutely. I do not trust you. That is that that is yes, that is it. The way you have been talking, though you just want to take care of me by buying the condoms. Who talk like that? Somebody who about to poke a hole in one. That's who. Run, bitch! That Run! Somebody who about to poke a hole in a condom. First of all, let me tell you something. I don't know a lot of women who like to go condom shopping. I just don't. I just don't. I don't know who wakes up saying, ooh, girl, I'm out of condoms. Because I'm going to get, get banged this weekend. I can feel it. You know, like, who who is thinking that far? Everybody, first of all, I mean, I don't even know the whole game. I don't know how women. I, single women, I guess, they go take that precaution they maybe but but well, who is looking forward because they sound like they have a lot of sex right right they just sound like they have a lot of sex so who looks forward to what condoms the the magnums come three in a three in a bag <laughs> you like <I> said, <laughs> comes three in a pack right that's you know mine come three in a pack so you know boxes of six boxes of 12 boxes of 24 so you know I don't know why she would want that responsibility to the point where she feels like she wants it to be her job, her official job. And it only takes one. It only takes one time. You know what I mean? So, you know, I don't even think her wanting to buy the condoms is an issue. It's just an issue of why are you acting so creepy? You know damn well I told you I don't want to have a baby. I'm not trying to have a baby. Well, you talking like, right? you know, if, if, you, if, some, if we slipped up, you wouldn't be mad. Right. But I would be upset because I'm, I'm not ready yet, but... I will be if you let me get there. Just let me get there. You know how dudes want to get one more bag in the check in their checking account. You know everybody want to like absolutely. And 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 you and it's youthful because a lot of times life experience tell you you ain't gonna never. I'm 40, bro. I said I'm gonna have it all and and know it all. You ain't gonna never be ready. That's the one thing that people always pass down from generation generation generation. You will never be ready for a child. You might as well just have one. You might what? as well just have one. You might as well have one when you think you're ready, but you think you're not ready. Because to be honest with you, you're ready. And that's the honest truth. You know what I mean? The baby manual, other than them, uh, I don't know, start teething, right? Every baby starts teething. 
So whatever you teach it before it teethes is going to forget once it starts teething. After, you know, after that, everybody's baby is different. Everybody's experience with a baby is different. Everybody's uh, a, a, a woman may be going through postpartum. You know, right. the dude may be going through anxiety. The baby may be going through I can't sleep and nobody else will sleep. And when you get lack of sleep, when you are sleeping only two to three hours a night and you got to go work a shift somewhere, you become psycho. You become crazy. You become a not nice person. And when your person is trying to be nice to you to bring you back off that ledge and you not nice back, then they become not nice. Now you got two not nice people. Huh. And now you're trying to like apologize or make a point or, you know, make up. But it doesn't matter because the very next time the baby cries or the very next time you say something wrong, she going to say, and you got a little dick. Uh, and when you're going to be like, where did that come from? Oh, no, God. <laughs> so pulling this train into the station. Sir, uh, I think your cause for concern is very real. But I also think she loves you. She wants to have your baby. And if you don't think it's like I want to be attached to him for the rest of my life because I think he is going to do well. If it ain't that and you think she genuinely loves you and she just wants to get started early, then just have another conversation with her with love and say, hey, babe, let me handle me. You handle you. And we going to be blessed with the most perfect baby ever when it's time for both of us. You know? Help me get there. Don't make me get there. Help me get there. It's time to finesse your mess. If you're always stressed, then you need to finesse your mess. Hey, this was a very fun episode of Understand This. People, let me tell you something. I want you to stay with me, fam bam. Spread the word. I want you to tell somebody to tell somebody. I got a dope podcast, bruh. It is called Understand This. Let me tell the people where I'm going to be. I will be going to Daytona Beach, August 16th, baby. <laughs> Daytona Beach. I'm coming to Daytona Beach, Florida. All right, go to finessemitchell.com. Hit me up at Finesse Mitchell. Go to understandthispodcast.com. Rate and review. Listen to it wherever you have and love and can access a podcast because it's everywhere. We everywhere. Uh, Finesse. Roberta, I know, you, I know you're mad at me. I know you're mad at me. It was wrong how I did you when the Drees came. But you just please have to understand. Please. Don't poke a hole in the condom, Roberta. Don't try to trap me. When I tell you when that time is the time, and I'm like, what what did the time go? Right. Jeannie. Another one. Another man. Another one. We we gonna have to get DJ Khaled. Not in person. <laughs> <laughs> I know, don't laugh. Not in person. Not in person. I know we can never get that get. I'm just saying, we're going to just rip his uh, another one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because this is another one, man. Podcast number four. I had such a good time. We are signing off. Don't forget to rate and review. Go to understandthispodcast.com, people. Go to understandthispodcast.com. That's all you got to do. Share it with people. Share it with people. Share it with people. We're going to build this fam bam up huge. Listen. Thank you for listening to me about my trip to Saudi Arabia. And then also, like I said, you want to see me live. I'll be in Daytona Beach for the first time ever. Daytona Beach. The craziest crimes happen in Florida. I hope none happen when I'm there. I'll be in Daytona <laughs> Beach, Florida. All right. That's a Friday, August 16th at Bonkers Comedy Club in Daytona Beach, Florida. And then August 23rd to the 25th, we'll be at Chuckles in Memphis, Tennessee. That's five shows. Uh, September 12th to the 14th will be at Magoobies in Timonium. That's right outside of Baltimore. And finally, September 19th to the 22nd, Jimmy Kimmel's. will be at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club in Las Vegas, Nevada. Go to FinesseMitchell.com for show dates. Also, last but not least, I finessed some mess today. I finessed some mess today. I helped somebody in my mind today. In my mind, I just saved a life, damn it. Uh, and I want to do it each and every time we do the segment Finesse Your Mess. But we need your questions. So go to askfinesse at finesseyourmess.com. No, I messed that up. So go to askfinesse at understandthispodcast.com. Once again, go to askfinesse at understandthispodcast.com. Yes, yeah, send me a question. If I can get to it and I can answer it, I hope it's a blessing to you or it made you laugh or it just made you say, 
He don't know what the fuck he talking about. I don't care either way it go. I got to your question. I did my part. All right. I love you. Fam, bam, I can't do this without you. Understand this podcast. We out.